From Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Hello there, hello, welcome to the COB. Great to have you here with us on the 24th of July, us being myself, Nadine Blaney. And Juliette Sali, on a day when we've seen just a little wobble, Nadine, but given some of the momentum you're seeing coming through on the close, it's not um, too bad. We've got, of course, a lot of focus on what's gonna happen in the US again tonight. We had those big tech earnings overnight. Tonight, you've got Las Vegas Sands, AT&T, Chipotle. And um, I noticed that the gold miners were tracking along pretty nicely. It looked like we had a bit of a rally around lunchtime too. But I must say that we do have U.S. futures coming under quite a lot of pressure. We've got European futures. They were under pressure. We've got a few results coming through in Europe. Deutsche Bank is one of them. Um, and that put a lot of pressure on the Australian dollar, which uh, had a negative session today. We did see some services data, some manufacturing data, services showing some slowing finally. Manufacturing data did um, improve, but mm. it is still in contractionary territory. We've got the Bank of Canada. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself, getting excited. You are getting excited. Let's just talk more broadly about the theme. So risk off was the it day was. when we were down about two tenths of one percent. Um, and ASIC's private dance. Now this was so interesting and so timely as always is in the news business. When you book these amazing guests and they're able to react instantaneously. We saw that with Patrick William today talking about, you know, whether or not he thinks that there needs to be that much regulation. He sort what did of, he say? He was really interesting. He was saying that there are a few bad eggs giving the rest of the industry a bad name and he thinks it's better if there's more sort of agreement amongst the industry to sort of do things the right way. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, better off watching it online. But yeah. It was a really interesting chat. It is up there. So I was at an ASIC event this morning listening to the chair Joe Longo speak as well as the CEO of the ASX. Helen Lofthouse. And so what uh, Longo was saying about this private market is that, you know, the, the skew might be a little bit off right now because, of course, we're seeing fewer listings, fewer publicly listed companies, uh, you know, a lot of money going into the private markets, uh, whether that be credit, whether it be equity. So he's saying he wants to open the conversation. He's got a team on it. It's the fifth priority for ASIC now to get a view on these private markets to see if there is conflict of interest, to see, you know, if there's some regulation that needs to happen to mm. see what's happening around valuations because there are there's so much money going into it it's so hot right now and it does you know potentially leave some investors vulnerable absolutely all right and a quick look at commodities crunch too because we did see weakness across i mean i guess the base metals market oil at a six week low i did mention though gold is rising as are the gold players Let's yeah have a quick iron ore coming under more pressure oh, yes. today as well continues to come off um energy is um actually we saw oil prices rise marginally in the asian session but uh, still the energy names being weighed down by that fall in the price of oil through the overnight period. And I dare say investors still digesting Woodside's mega m a in the United States. All right, having a look at the banks today. Um, and interesting, I had a great chat with Mark Jokum from the ETF world that they've launched a new ETF to cover these banks with the ticker B-A-N-K. CBA coming off records, ANZ lower, but NAB, Westpac, Macquarie higher today. I'm sure our check is in the mail for that plug. Um, interesting that we had Joe Longo from ASIC today being asked Asked about those charges against the um, ANZ. He was asked if, if look, if the bank bosses have become less humble, if they're less conscientious, and he said, look, just let, um, you know, he, he reckons that um, he just wants them to remain remain very humble and alert um, all right. to all of the potential risks out there in this you space. Know, and the miners have actually fared okay today. We look at Rio and Fortescue higher um, and the gold players there as well in terms of um, that's the gold price, but we did see gold stocks moving really well today as well. We've got Northern Star up by 2.5%, Evolution up by 3%, and West Gold up by 4%. Now, in the commodity space, we are in the production report season, and we did have Pilbara, so the biggest lithium producer here in Australia. It was up about half a percent at one point, jump in revenue, and pretty positive looking forward. Um, Perpetual had fund outflows, though. Yeah, absolutely. Sending its share price down by about 1.1%. Tealix is not going to list on the NASDAQ anymore. Bowing out of that, it also raised um, $650 million via convertible debt. And uh, Flight Center coming under quite a lot of pressure. What it did is narrow its guidance. So underlying profit now expected to come in between 316 and $324 million for FY24. But clearly, market did not like that. Yeah, a bit of turbulence. The stock of the day was Flight <laughs> Center. Henry Jennings, Marcus Today, and Luke Larative from Seneca Financial Solutions joined Andrew. Well, 
I know the markets are taking this as a downgrade, but you could equally take this as an upgrade as well in some respects. What, what they have done is tightened up the range. It previously was 300 to 340. Uh, the market has got itself into a bit of a tither, I guess, to some extent, because they've tightened the range up uh, to 316 to 324. Now, 316 is bigger than 300, but unfortunately, 324 is smaller than 340. So the market is taking it as a downgrade. At least that was the initial dump. I think it was down around 8%. We're now down around 4%. It has rallied up in anticipation of this. It's just too hard basket for Flight Centre. It's kind of priced at sort of 15-ish times earnings, like a sort of semi-growth business. Um, and in reality, it's kind of a business in decline. And, you know, when do you pick up the knife? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it might be a little bit too hard for me. Sounds like a sell to me. <laughs> then I would go as far as a sell on the current value. If management can deliver, you yep. know, get back to those margins, look, it, it might be worth paying a few dollars more for. Do I think, you know, there's, there's a lot on the table here. So welcome to the COB, Mark Gardner, who's joining us from MPC Markets. Good Mark, afternoon. Good day to you. What do you make of the market action today? Uh, obviously, we had an initial re really positive reaction to Google's um, earnings overnight, and obviously drifted off. Um, as a, they sort of looked under the hood. The, you know, the obviously the higher expectations for AI is not. I think it's their regular business that's chipping along quite nicely. They've got the earnings beat rather than the AI portion. Um, Tesla obviously disappointed as well after the bell. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, commodities are not helping at the moment. Commodities and energy, particularly, um, which. But I, I think there'll be a little bit of a flaw in a lot of those big material stocks leading coming into earnings season because of obviously we've got some decent fully frank dividends coming. Um, even with the you know the likes of Fortescue and BHP are still going to be paying some really nice divvies, particularly at these prices. So mm. you'll probably try and find you'll find a bit of a flaw in there um, at some stage, but. Um, uh, the China stimulus not really coming through as as much as much as what people would have liked. They, we obviously got a rate cut um, on Monday um, from uh, the PBOC, but you know, or the moving of that prime line rate. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think there's there's a lot of bad news already priced into that energy and commodity sector, and um, I think you'll probably find that they'll they'll start to settle. Pilbara was a good example. You know, yeah. there's, it's just you know. Um, the lithium stocks have just been absolutely abandoned, and yet Pilbara's come out. You know, they're still sitting on a pile of cash, um, and you know, forty-eight percent jump in revenues. So they were up about five percent early, but I think people, obviously, you know, watching that lithium price, and they, they were pretty happy to take some off the table because it's been it's been pretty weak. But I think you'll probably look back in two or three years' time, and you'll be like, oh. Damn it! Why didn't I buy you know such a quality company? Um, but the commodity trades are really noisy trades, so it's not for everyone overall. You just got to be aware that um, it's it's not like a, a wise tech or a technology one or a growth stock like that where it's sort of a linear upwards line. Like there's always you know external factors that are going to affect those commodities trades, so they're a little bit bumpy. You just need to have your allocation size in the right. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I mean, Pilbara, you touched on there, but another big story, which was our stock of the day, was Fly Centre. I mean, how mm. do you sort of play, pardon the pun, the turbulence in the travel industry at the moment? Because to Flight Centre's point, people, when they are spending consumer discretionary, they're, they're focusing more on experiences, on travel, than they yeah. are on physical goods. Uh, Webjet and Flight Centre have been a really good winners over the last 12 months, realistically. I mean, you look in the travel sector, there's the out-of-favour stocks, corporate travel, for instance, is really under pressure at the moment um that's probably where i think if you're looking for value um that's probably where i'd be in that in that um travel sector i think that's where the value would be at the moment but um but you know it i think it's probably more the market's expectations than flight center doing something wrong necessarily um they're, they're priced at pretty aggressive pe's at the moment and um and we are looking at either another rate hike or a little, you know small reductions in consumer spending or tightening the discretionary budget so you know, it's. I, I'm pretty surprised at the resilience of the consumer discretionary sector as a whole. I mean, we've had a few red flags where the likes of BAPCOR and things like that that have been um, hit pretty significantly recently, where portions of the of that consumer discretionary are starting to see spending slow down. Um, it, earnings season will be pretty definitive for for um, for that sector. I would have thought so. Um, and look, West Farmers is just so resilient. 
and they've you know they've got a very big lithium project in there as well and they mm. just seem to have you know there's certain parts of the market that are adopting the goldilocks scenario and there's certain parts of the market like commodities at the moment that are adopting the economic slowdown like so it's likely to be somewhere in between which is the reality but there's um there's bargains out there at the moment if you you know if if you're willing to have a look around um particularly healthcare's done very well so far in the u.s earnings um and we've been we quite like resmed is, was hit off the back of the Eli Lilly thing um even in the small caps things like my um monash ivf um recently got hit um they're usually pretty consistent over earnings so yeah so that's a sector that you're looking at favorably it sounds like yeah it's, it's, it's the non-cyclical nature um but also the obviously the um the consistency of like united health was up se- you know seven odd percent um but they've all seemed to have been able to increase margins so far it's only early in the earnings season but um but res obviously resmin sticks out for us um uh, particularly at the moment and um yeah, there's a there's a few there's a few things even like the likes of computer share for instance which has been up the last couple of days yeah everyone's pricing in forward weakness in you know in that one because rates are going to come down but I, I still think there's you know they've got a lot of upside for that stock if um you know private equity m a um activity starts to um, head up um obviously they've still had good results you know despite they've been very few ipos yeah. um and you know they're they're a pretty they're a pretty low PE for a growth company, um, and they and they yield a small amount as well. I think about three percent, which is not too bad considering um, you know, some of the big four these days aren't really yielding a hell of a lot at these prices. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out with in earnings. All right, Resmed's um, August first. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. So, and look at that trade's been really reliable the last. You know, we get you get the GLP one drug announcements. Resmed gets hit. It's, they're usually good buying opportunities because it does tend to um, de- it tends to beat on earnings. I think the last four quarterly earnings, it's beaten expectations. Um, and I'm mildly in the in the boat with um, the CEO. I think it's it's more so raising awareness of sleep apnea at the moment for them. Um, and the GLP one drugs aren't available enough to really hit their revenue. So, and they've got a great business model. So I think that's probably one that um, that should do pretty well. Like next week. I wanted to ask you though about what we saw on Wall Street. I mean, we're looking forward now, but just when you look backwards to Tesla and to Alphabet, I mean, there's so much importance on the adoption of and reliance on AI, and that was really what drove those results. Yeah, and, and I and I think that that this is going to be a tricky couple of earnings seasons, I think, for the US. This one and the next one is that you know they've gone and done a lot of spending um, on the infrastructure, and these periods are usually when they don't get the revenue, the you know, the instantaneous revenue um, improvements. Um, we, you know, we're hearing it even with Salesforce, which is one of the leaders in in AI. Um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, desk user, um, that you know, whilst this new technology is coming on their platform, it's not, you know, the uptake from the users is not really mm. there yet. So, it could end up being a little bit of a. I'm, I'm a very big believer in like long term in the AI thematic, um, but at the moment it's it. You know that initial buzz. I think markets are impatient. They'll probably any sort of disappointing results will probably end up seeing a bit of a you know a bit of a sell-off because we're priced to perfection pretty much. But you know, that probably brings the, the the buying opportunity overall. I think. Mm. Um, I mean, we we're looking at next phase being the infrastructure build for AI, um, and you know, and obviously things like copper and power power with you through uranium etc um and and those data cent uh data center rates and things so um i think that'll probably be the next the next good phase i mean goodman's is already ahead of it here in australia but there's also some you know the likes of next dc's pull back as yeah. well so yeah it, it'll it's not going to be again it'll be a bit of a bumpy ride because the expectations are now so set so high that um you know, any form of disappointment is going to bring it back, and I think that that switch out of tech into the large cap, uh, sorry, into the small caps that we saw last week is probably a bit of an early warning sign. Um, but yeah, we're, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they come out with um, overall. And I think one of the big risks for those chip makers, is, as particularly, is ninety percent of all of those chips are manufactured in Taiwan, um, and it's a it, if we have any form of um, geopolitical situation that involves Taiwan, China and the US, um, you know, that's that there is a huge, huge risk there that they can't that the supply chain gets locked up as well. So um, so yeah, it's just a um, you know, it's unlikely to happen, but then I didn't think they'd invade Ukraine either. Oh, so there's um, a lot that's happened in the so last So tonight, Bank of Canada. 
Yeah, looking to ease. Um, and yeah, I'd look, it um, be interesting to see what you know what they come out with in terms of um, you know, the statement as well. So um, retail sales there are slowing, inflation's coming off. Yeah, so. exactly. And we've got some manufacturing data in the US as well. Um, so yeah, it uh, I think advanced GDP and PCE will probably be the main show for markets, um, which are, which is later in the week. And then I think earnings season in the US there doesn't tend to be big moves. It, it'll there'll be a lot of really high volatility and fluctuation within indi- in, within individual stocks, but the market tends to get at least two or three weeks through that US earnings season before it sort of picks a direction a, a direction for the next quarter. So. Probably not expecting a huge reaction from the economic numbers until we get the, a big chunk of the MAG7 out of the way next week. And they've got Amazon, Apple um, at least next week. Um, I can't remember. I think there might be a third as well. I think Microsoft might be out as well. So it's hard I think to keep up. <laughs> it is. Well, the concentration risk is so huge now. I think it's a record amount of concentration risk for the top five or top ten stocks. So those guys are just so important for the rest of the market. And it also is sucking up so much of the fund money. The fund inflows have just been, if you see, it's an incredible chart. It's just, it's just been to those tech names for the last 12 months. Um, I think you'll find, if, even if we come out of those mag seven, it's probably gonna be pretty good for the rest of the market because they're gonna, be start, they're gonna start to look at other stocks that they've probably just not had to consider for the last 12 months yeah. because those, that AI trade's been such a good trade. All right, Mark, always a pleasure. We'll see you next week. See you soon, Mark. All right, let's get across some of these market leaders to see what helped move this market higher. And we did see some positivity in and amongst those gold miners. So we've got West African Resources, a real standout. It's up by about 5%. And again, we did have its uh, quarterly production report coming through. So on track for a full year, all in sustaining costs of below US 1300 an ounce. All right, to the laggards today, we've touched on TLX and, of course, pulling out of its NASDAQ debut as well. Flight Centre, we touched on as well. A little bit of weakness, as we mentioned, in resources. And Arena REIT down 3%. Okay, so the small to mid cap space. Let's see what we've got here. Fast Bricks up by 17%. Immutemp up by 8.3%. And flipping the page to the laggards. I don't know. I don't think we talked to any of these companies today. <laughs> but Argosy we did Minerals. Talk about... No, we didn't. No. That was... Frontier Energy, we did. Oh, we did? Yes. What happened at Frontier? (sighs) Sorry. (laughs) Neither one of us know, but guess what? You can go online, uh, osbiz.com.au, and you can find out for yourself. All right, let's have a look at what's happening overnight. Bank of Canada, we do know about. US data on inventories, goods trade, new home sales, um, PMI, and then we mentioned a lot of these companies coming through with earnings. So you've got the likes of Chipotle, Ford, Las Vegas Sands, Whirlpool. Now, speaking of Las Vegas Sands, one interview I do remember was we spoke to Blackwaddle and Joseph Coe talking about a lot of the gambling opportunities here, stocks you can bet on. Yeah, and you know what, Jules? I wonder if tomorrow we'll be looking at Chipotle and this time putting it in context of GYG. Mm. Mark Gardner just gave me a little thumbs up because, you know, there's... <laughs> Uh, there's been such hype. There's been, um, you know, a few doubters saying, how does a little Aussie company think they're going to go into the U.S. and take on the likes of Chipotle? Uh, interesting, just to reference back to that ASIC event this morning as well. You know, you heard Helen Loftus, the CEO of the ASX, talking about, you know, the GYG listing and what that could potentially mean as far as, you know, more listings wanting to come to market. She said that looking at the inflation outlook, she reckons that the activity is likely to pick pick up. up. Yeah, cool. All right, have a quick look tomorrow at what we're going to look out for. Now, business confidence. We've got quarterly updates coming from from the likes of Fortescue, also uh, Karoon, Northern Star, Sandfire, and Macquarie holding its AGM. Oh, President Biden is also speaking. I think that might might be be the first time. Yeah, Yeah. Um, since obviously he's withdrawn from the presidential race. So that is something that we will continue to talk about probably at nauseum from here to November, I dare say. I guess he's getting over COVID as well. All right. Well, the market down two tenths of one percent on the CBO 200. The ASX 200 also had a little wobble, as we mentioned, 13 points lower, 7,958. Yeah, Japan's Nikkei closed lower for the sixth straight day the longest losing streak this is surprising since october 2021 and as i mentioned we did see pressure coming through on not just european futures but u.s futures throughout the day today i guess there's still a lot of digestion that will happen when it comes to the tesla and the google or alphabet result because of course that was you know aftermarket yeah and as tesla of course missing uh wall street expectations we are going to see you and do it all again tomorrow from 9 45.